lovely folks at YouTube, Ren here. It is May. Things are going crazy here in the garden. Lots of flowers, lots of pending fruits. Um, I'm not gonna dawdle with an intro. We're just gonna get right into the, uh, the little tour here. So let's get to it. Um, I do want to let you know we literally just rained. Uh, had a little sun shower here. I think we got another rain coming in about an hour or so, but we're taking the opportunity to, uh, to kind of, um, there was a bird there. I think that's a cat bird or a thrasher, one or the other. Um, can't really see it through the camera. Anyway, oh, distracted. Um, yes, so taking this brief lull between the rains to kind of take a look at things and um wow my hazel this year is like ginormous look at all the leaves on it it's looking great um i did plant some new stuff underneath it ignore the recycling bin we're getting rid of those soon um woo, you go under here there's a little cave and um i'm planting some ajuga under there that hopefully will come up and cover stuff over well enough that i'm not going to have so many weeds that i have to pull out of there so uh, blueberries are very close, very close, you can see there, yeah, they're almost full size, so that's going to be soon. Um, raspberries are also getting a little closer. I have two types of raspberries, so this one here, hmm, I think that's the red raspberry, and then I have some in here that, like this one right here. This one's definitely a black raspberry. So I actually like the black raspberries better. Um, I think they have a better flavor, just personal preference. Uh, spinach is already starting to bolt. I haven't even had a chance to harvest it yet and it's starting to bolt already, but whatever, we'll figure it out. Um, and the wheat is also looking really, really good. So this is getting to the time now where I have to start planting some of the, the warm weather crops in here as well. I've already planted some, interplanted some warm weather crops in with this stuff over here. So you can see my carrots are filling in. And then I have the, uh, the physalis, the, um, uh, ground cherries in between those. There's one of my tomatoes that already has some little flowers starting to form on it. And you can see there are, oh, can you see that? Come here, you. There you go. There's quite a few radishes that need to be harvested today, so. This parsley is all bolting. Look at this. So that's going to make a bunch of seeds for me. I can still harvest leaves off of this even while it's bolting, so that's fine. And then you can see the lettuce is also filled in quite nicely. There's some weeds over here, but you know, it's fine. Um, looks like I only have a couple of broccoli plants that survived. I have the one that looks really nice there, and then a couple little teeny tiny ones. Others got munched down, but it happens. And then, of course, the peas are really climbing up the trellis here. Come here, you two. Go over here. Get on the trellis. Whatever. <laughs> so that should start blooming on me soon. Asparagus, meh. I mean, I got some little, little teeny tiny babies. Um, by my count, I have uh, somewhere around 12 or 13 asparagus that did actually come up out of the 20 that I planted in here. So it's not too bad, I guess. I guess. So I do have something new that I planted in here. This little guy right here, that is a native wild strawberry, the Fragaria virginiana. So that I'm excited about. I'm hoping to fill in this bed with some of the little wild strawberries. I do have some of the more the cultivated strawberries over here that, um, you know, we'll just see what happens. So, and then of course I've been filling up all the mess in this back corner. <laughs> oh, I wanted to show you this. This is a fun thing that happens. That's an asparagus right there that just migrated out of the bed. Probably grew from seed. So, strawberries have been doing wonderful. I've been harvesting strawberries. I have a little bowl of the ones that I harvested yesterday. And there's going to be more today because look at that. Look at that little strawberry there. That one's just about ready to be picked. Amazingly enough, I've been beating the birds to most of them. So, that's cool. Let's go over here and look at the herb bed. I have to duck under the Chionanthus. It's all weighed down with the rain. You can see my chives are just 
really blooming here. Um, this is, and then all these flowers here. This is all the sage flowers right here. They're just gorgeous. So I'm excited about that. And this, look at how tall it's getting. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, um, that other plant that I wasn't entirely sure is definitely a hollyhock. And it's planted in there with some of the, I have some bronze fennel in there. So we'll see what happens. And of course the thyme is still blooming. Um, and this anise hop is just huge. It's like almost twice as big as it was last year. So that's exciting. I gotta go around the tree. Otherwise I'm gonna get doused. And yes, my grass needs to be mowed. I was hoping it would happen this past weekend, but it didn't. So uh, Anyway, here's my apothecary rose. You can see that's blooming. Unfortunately, a lot of the flowers here have already been spent. Um, but there are some buds here. So, um, this, hang on, right here, right like this. This is right about where you want to harvest these. You literally just kind of pinch the bud off like that. That can be dried, um, and basically it smells delicious. It, uh, it has that real good rose fragrance, but it keeps everything together nicely so that, um, you know, it doesn't just become like a pasty mess when you dry it so i'm gonna save that but yes that's that's the uh the gather ye rosebuds that gather ye rosebuds while you may that's that's the rosebuds that you're gonna gather right there um this is the one i usually gather the rosebuds off of i have another apothecary rose in the front that i usually let flower um and then i try to get hips off of that one so and you can see the mulane here is massive and what do we got in the middle there? Yeah, I think we got a little baby flower stalk starting to form there. Maybe, maybe. So, and then I got this one. This is new. This is my winter savory. So we're going to try it over here. I used to have one over by the rue, but it didn't make it through. So I'm trying it in a different spot. Uh, da -da -da. You know what? I'm going to do something a little different this time. I want to show you all what I did yesterday. I cleaned out my shed. My shed is a mess. Um, this thing is probably original to the house, which means it's like at least 30 years old. So like, it doesn't even close anymore. I have this rock holding the door closed, but I have it all cleaned out and organized. Look at that. See, I got all my big tools here and then my small tools are on this little hutch. And up here is all my fertilizer and insecticide. And down here is all the big stuff like the lime and the diatomaceous earth. I do have Roundup. I rarely use it, but every now and then I will get poison ivy that pops up and uh, that shit needs Roundup. Um, and then of course the gas can for my lawnmower, which is over here. Um, this stuff over here is my dad, uh, my husband's um, workbench. It's like a, he built it himself. It's his woodworking bench that he basically has it where it can be assembled and disassembled because he usually does it on the deck um kids have a bike that they haven't ridden in ages and then we just have a bunch of random other stuff like there's sleds back there there's my pole pruner random <laughs> wood um this is actually a stack of fire this is for yule so that's our yule log right there waiting for yule uh and then of course i have all my bird netting and burlap and random other stuff so i'm really happy with how it looks right now um my goal in getting that cleaned out and organized is that it makes it a lot easier uh, when we need to take everything out to replace this shed because i'm hoping maybe this year will be the year that we'll replace this thing there's a lot of steps that need to be done before then but you know we're working on it anyway back to the garden itself so um you can see my little bootlegia here is is coming up I have not been able to find another similar bootlegia to go on the other side where the other one died, which I'm kind of disappointed by. So I'm thinking if I can find one. I have to I have to source one first, but I'm thinking I might end up digging this bootlegia out and moving it somewhere else and instead putting two bayberries on either side of this uh this bent this uh stairwell for the deck. So but again, that's that's counting on me finding them. Uh, the rue is massive. Look at all those flowers on it. It's going to make me a lot of seeds, which is going to make a lot of baby rue plants. But, you know, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Lunaria is done blooming. 
but look at all the cool seed pods on there. So that's where it gets its name. These little seed pods will dry out and turn kind of white and look like little moons with the seeds embedded inside. So um, some of those seed pods I'm just going to let fall so that I will have more Lunaria again. And the others I will harvest and uh, use them for something. I'll figure it out. So um, this little rose here, my ebb tide, has been getting eaten by something, but it is not to be deterred. It is still making flowers. So we'll see. And then, of course, you can see here my chamomile is getting ready to bloom. Um, this bed is sort of cleaned out. There's still a bunch of clover, like, further back. But um, I got the worst of it is taken care of. So, um, there we go. You can see. Can you see? Sort of see. All right. There we go. That's my Baptisia that's blooming right there. So that one's cool. Um, and then behind it is the, uh, the oak leaf hydrangea, which is also blooming. So exciting stuff. Uh, the sweet grass has been spreading, which is excellent. It's what I hope to achieve with that. My gooseberry came back and is looking twice as big as it was, which is wonderful. I don't know whether I'll get any fruit off of it this year. I don't think it's made any flowers, but what has been flowering is this blackberry. Look at that. That's craziness. So there's still some blackberry canes that need to be dug out of there, but um, I got the worst of it out. So, And then these two mulane might also send up some flower stalks for me. They're looking suspiciously like they're about to do that, so we'll see. This is the other thing that's been blooming like crazy are my roses here. The Penelope rose. Oh my gosh, when I sit in my little chair over there, all I smell is roses and peonies. Oh, it's delightful. Delightful. So. Uh, this little guy right here is my wood betony. That is going to be blooming soon. So, and then speaking of peonies, here we go. Uh, again, it's kind of weighed down with the rain. I didn't stake it up as well as I could have, but there we go. So, mostly white, of course. This is the Festival Maxima. It's got, like, sometimes these little red flecks on the flowers, but mostly white. Very old cultivar. Very nice. Very nice peony. And it's just, like huge this year. Stuff in the pots is cleaned up and looking much better. Uh, have some new friends over here. Obviously, you know, the horseradish is doing well. This lavender is getting ready to bloom. When it does, we'll have a video on that. Um, lemon verbena is looking good. This is a new one. This is my French tarragon. I used to have that over in the garden bed, but it just didn't make it through, so I figured we'll put it in a pot. The hyssop, doing well. Another new one over here in the pots is the Lovage. That was, again, one that I used to have out in the garden that didn't make it. And then I got this new rosemary here, which is the Gorizia cultivar. So it looks massive, like massive needles on it. it I bought it mainly because the name reminded me of Godzilla. So <laughs> uh, the old rosemary is still with us. I moved it out into the front where it's kind of like next to the path that leads up next to the stairs that leads up to my front door. So I have rosemary by the front door now, so um, yarrow is cleared out. Um, this one is a, is a little one. It's a tiny one. It's not very tall, so you can see there's a little flower bud there. It probably will bloom. It only gets up to about a foot tall. That angelica is getting huge. The arnica is going to get ready to bloom soon, too. We'll hopefully have a video on that one as well, and you can see I have one foxglove that's blooming and then a few others that are getting ready. The elder is really dying back a lot, so I need to get in there and prune that. I think that it's being hit by those elder wood borers that dig in there. So Marshmallow's good. Agrimony's good. Valerian right here. This is actually the Valerian. It looks it's right next to the elder. And at a glance, you might think that they're actually the same, but no, they're uh, they're two different things. So this is going to bloom really soon too, and that has an amazing fragrance to it. it. Has that weird, funky Valerian undertone to it, but I don't mind that so much. Here's a new friend. This is a geranium, um, actual geranium. Not most people will hear geraniums and they think uh, pelargonium. Pelargonium is uh, what are, is most commonly called, so, sold as a scented geranium, but this is an actual true geranium. 
so you see these little flowers like this so that's a new one i'm hoping that will spread and fill into some of this area so and of course you can see my moss is doing really well with the rain the uh, the wind flower here is almost done all right now brace yourselves because you're going to see a big change back here okay so I'm heading back towards the pond first thing you can see is that i really pruned back my wigella really hard really hard there was a lot of really like unhealthy looking growth on it um so in order to just improve what came in i had to just prune it back as hard as i could so it will grow back it's fine like it's yeah it was overextending itself so i just cut it back down to where it'll it'll have more normal looking growth here's the other thing that's really different ah look at that i'm getting rid of my vanka i'm just i'm tired of having it back here it's been encroaching in a lot of spots that i didn't want it so there's still some over here uh, that i'm in the process of digging out but for by and large like i'm gonna fill this in with other plants i'm doing more natives so like this little guy i have right here that's um actea racemosa uh formerly known as simsifuga racemosa which is black cohosh so i have some black cohosh here uh this little guy right here this is actually a really cool one this is a uh, pacara which is a golden ragwort. This is a ground cover that will make these nice, like bright yellow daisy-like flowers in the spring. So those are both things that I'm hoping to fill in with. I got um, some plants that hopefully will be coming this week that also will be good for back here. Like one of the things I got is golden seal. So that's gonna go in this little back corner here behind the, uh, behind my little Japanese maple. Um, I got a uh, bracken fern which is not the showiest ferns, but it is very much a native. So um, the place that I ordered it from, I'm kind of pissed off about it, actually. So the bracket fern is actually in that dug up spot right there. It came bare root. It looked like garbage. And the way that they had packed it is they just literally put the bare roots in a damp paper bag and threw that into a padded envelope, which got delivered on Sunday. And nobody told me that they, it was, I mean, it was, U.S. Postal Service. They usually don't deliver on Sunday, but they delivered this one on Sunday, left it in my black metal mailbox, where it then got cooked for several hours the next day. So, I don't know whether that's actually going to live or not. I'm a little mad about it, but I did some TLC. I got it in the ground as fast as I could. Hopefully it'll come up. We'll see. So, pond eh, needs a little more water, but it's doing okay. Um, probably needs a little water clarifier too it's getting a little cloudy but that's fine uh, there are fish in there they don't come out when I'm around but if I sit next to the pond really quietly they will come out there are seven or eight of them in there so theoretically assuming that they haven't you know succumbed to whatever comes by and tries to eat them so, one thing that has been spreading really nicely is my lily of the valley here so it's actually spread a whole bunch back here. I started with one plant, so I know that one's not native, but I have a special place in my heart for it. So, so yeah, um, digging this vinca out is also going to make it easier for me to find and uh, neutralize any of the random things that like to pop up in there, like the trees and stuff that try to grow in there. So anyway, yep. That's me. This stuff, I gotta keep an eye on this stuff. I have a feeling these are gonna be, oh, they did, they opened up on me. All right, I know what I'm doing today. I'm coming out here to harvest hellebore seeds. So, those seeds are ready. I gotta come out and pick them. Ah, I think that's all I got. I got a bunch of little ferns that popped up. I love the ferns, I really do. Um, these are wild, they just come up on their own and I'm cool with it, so. There's a bunch more over here where the moss was too. And I'm, um, again, like, I leave them be. They're welcome. Anyway. I think that's all I'm going to go over here for today. Back in the sun. I hear all the birds. I had a family of wrens that nested somewhere in my yard. I don't know exactly where. But I've been seeing the babies around, you know, they, they fledged recently, so I've been seeing the babies, four of them, four babies, 
And then the mom and dad have been like constantly scolding me whenever I wander too close. So that's fun. <laughs> so anyway, um, I think I'll end this here. So yeah, happy May y'all. I hope this video finds you well and I will see you again soon.